Good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for the invitation. Um, Mr. Astanat Dawai is obviously a very persuasive person. And uh, until yesterday, I did not know I was coming here, but uh, um, I was in Lambasa and we had a chat, and so we came here this afternoon. Uh, apologies for the delay because the Fiji, Fiji link flight was in fact delayed. So I flew from Lambasa to Nasori, then wait there for a while, then from Nasori to, to Nandi. But we are here. And obviously, it's, it's a good occasion. Um, I was very worried uh, when uh, Mrs. Dawai was saying that, you know, we had people from Nandi and Naita Siri and Tailevu and Kandavu and everywhere, but she didn't know, she forgot to mention Nanroga. I'm very worried about that. Not, not once. I was listening to her. She said about three times. Not once did she mention Nanroga. So I hope the conservative forest is not being discriminatory against the people from Nanonga. But I'd like to, of course, acknowledge the conservative forest uh, and her team who are here. Um, both the speakers before me have mentioned a, a lot about the course, and I don't want to, you know, repeat that, regurgitate that, because we, I know we're all very hot and we need to go through the ceremony. But I just wanted to highlight one key important message, and that the, uh, the government has, over the past number of years, invested a lot of money in training and education. In fact, in this year's budget, we just delivered on the 15th of July. Apart from courses like this, we have an allocation of about a million dollars for courses like this. We allocated $166 million just in the TELS um, and, of course, the Topper Scholarship. If you look at the budget as announced on the 15th of July, we're now also offering short-term courses, which we will actually pay for, what we call the Quick Wins the one-week course, the two-week course, the three-week course, the one-month course on tiling, bricklaying, plastering, all of joinery, carpentry. There's a huge shortage of those skill sets, not just in Fiji, but as you can see, as you've heard, in countries like Australia and New Zealand. Huge shortage. So we need those skill sets ourselves in our country for our economy, but if there are people who also are demanded overseas, they can also go overseas too. As a government, you know, when we listen to these great stories, people going to uh, New Zealand under this scheme, we have people now going to Australia. But I'm always at the back of my mind thinking about what about Fiji also. So please, some of you stay back too in Fiji. Because we need people in Fiji for chainsaw skill sets, silviculture, portable saw milling, as the conservative forest will tell you, we've invested a lot recently in portable sawmills for the other islands, in the maritime areas. Many of the maritime islands actually have got very large pine plantations. So we're setting up portable sawmills so they can actually use the timber, not just to build their own homes, but also earn a living from that. There is, uh, please be minded that at the moment globally, because of the pandemic, because, because of COVID now, a lot of people have changed their preference for which area of work they'll do. In New Zealand, for example, two weeks ago, there was an article that they need 65,000 people to work in the hospitality industry. There's not enough people who want to be waiters and waitresses. Not enough people who want to work in the hotels. There's a shortage of nurses in Australia. In Melbourne, a few weeks ago, the waiting time at the public hospital, if you went there, you had to wait for 24 hours before anybody saw you, the shortage of nurses. England or London, UK is bringing nurses from India to work in their hospitals. One health center in Suva recently had six nurses leave in one week for overseas. There's a huge demand. So if you see in the budget, we've allocated a lot more funding to give scholarships for our young people to become nurses also. So there's there's a whole movement taking place at the moment, in particular in this region. If you see in the in the developed world, a lot of people are not wanting to do various jobs. So they're looking at the developing countries like ours, provide the right men and women to do the job. So for us, it's, it's a balance for us to make sure we still have enough people. About uh, six weeks ago, there was an advertisement in where Australian recruiting agencies we're offering 80 to 120,000 Australian dollars a year for chefs who have three years or more experience. Chefs. 
So if all the Fijian leaves, Fijian chefs leave Fiji to work in Australia, who's going to cook the food at uh, Denro? We want tourists to come to Fiji too, right? We want, we make money from tourism also. So for us, it's a, it's a, for a government, it's to, we have to do the right things. We have to continue to invest in our young people. We are very lucky, unlike some other countries, today in Fiji, 65%, the entire population is below the age of 35. There are a lot of young people coming through. Some countries like Japan is the other way around. Most bulk of the population is over the age of 65 or 70. You can go to a supermarket in Japan and a 70-year-old or 75-year-old will be packing your groceries for you, pushing the trolleys for you. So, clearly the world is changing. I'd like to, of course, uh, thank all the participants for taking the initiative and all the organizers and the Ministry of Forestry for taking the initiative to upskill yourselves. Remember one thing, that when you upskill yourself, whether it's a certificate, whether it's a diploma, whether it's a master's, whether it's a bachelor's education, whether it's some certificate one, two, three, four, whichever one it is, it is yours forever. I can buy a car, I can have an accident, I can lose it. I can have clothes, I can get fat, I no longer use it. Or I get too skinny, I no longer can use it. Once you get a qualification, it's yours. Nobody can take it away from you. That's yours forever, till the day you die. So if you have got those skill sets, I would urge you to, if you've got a job, if you go overseas, or if you stay in Fiji, get a job, that's great. Good for you. Please, if you go overseas, don't waste your money. As the letter writer has pointed out, there are people who are sending back lots of money too. You have a family, you have a home back here, and you can contribute to your, to your country by sending money back home and build a future for yourself. We've seen many people have gone overseas, including rugby players. Earning lots of money, but did not know how to save. They're now driving taxis. So when you go overseas, please not just save your money, but also try and continuously upskill yourself. You can do another four-week course later on, six months later, one year later. Maybe you'll do another course after that. You can start thinking about not only working, but think about how you can also start your own business. There's opportunities. Not everybody wants to go into business, but you may want to. So remember, once you've got training, the world is your oyster, as they say. So once again, uh, thank you, Mrs. Dawai, for the invitation. All those who participated, the family members who supported those who participated in this uh, particular certification course. As I said, we've also allocated about $17 million more uh, this year in the forestry budget. The Ministry of Forestry is becoming quite large. Has also been highlighted. There's a number of opportunities in the forestry sector too. You know, we have under the Climate Change Act that has been referred to climate change. We have now what we call carbon trading also. Before, we never used to value the forest unless it's cut down. The forest is standing there, we say, oh, there's a forest. When you cut it down, that's when you make money. Now you can make money by the forest still staying there. It's another way of looking at it. Because the trees, they suck the carbon and they put out oxygen. We breathe oxygen, put out carbon. Very simple maths. But now com companies actually pay you to keep the trees in the ground. So there's a number of opportunities in that space. We are working with the, all the different agencies and all the development partners. I'd like to, of course, thank all those who've been involved in this. Uh, we wish you all the best. And wish you uh, and congratulations to you for achieving this, uh, this certification. And I'm sure that uh, we all can put our hands together and wish all the. <laughs>
No! 